Talk to us about that division between public and private, that partnership. What does NASA do today? What does SpaceX do today? So obviously NASA has made huge investments into the International Space Station. So we're largely focused on the International Space Station, but we are also the customer for this launch. So as the mission management team goes through the countdown sequence, we're going to have NASA engineers and NASA flight directors that are going to be um, side by side with the with the SpaceX engineers and flight directors. And, and um, if at any point we feel uncomfortable with the direction that they're going, of course, we can we can halt the launch. But what NASA is trying to do right now, we are trying to create a robust commercial marketplace in low Earth orbit. That's the goal, which means we need SpaceX to go get customers that are not NASA. We want to be a customer, but we want to be one of many customers. So what we're doing is we're giving SpaceX a lot of leash. In fact, we have contracted for them to actually do the launch almost independently. Um, but make no mistake, our engineers and our technicians have been involved in the development of this capability, um, and our, our astronauts have been involved in it. Um, so again, we want to be one customer of many. Um, we, are, we are helping to grow this commercial marketplace um, by being a tenant customer initially. But we also want to have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation and safety. Um, and when we achieve that, it's going to transform how we do spaceflight. It's going to bring down costs and it's going to increase access. So you talked about commercialization, which is particularly interesting to our audience, how that works. When it comes to SpaceX launching satellites, it's pretty clear. A bunch of companies as well as governments need satellites up in orbit. What about for astronauts? Is there the same demand, commercial demand? What's the top line, the revenue there? Yeah, at this point, um, the history has been that government creates the demand and then government creates the supply. And so what we're doing here is we're trying to change that paradigm. Um, certainly, we are creating the demand and we're turning to commercial industry to give us the supply. Um, but again, what we want to see eventually um, is the demand would come from others as well. Um, and so what are we doing right now? We're using the International Space Station to do things like we're, we're creating human organs in 3D, printing human organs in 3D using adult stem cells. Right now, it's just tissue, but eventually it's going to be full organs. And we can only do that in the microgravity of space. If you try to do it on Earth, the tissue just goes flat. But then, of course, it's not just that. It's also using advanced materials to create artificial retinas for the human eyeball. So somebody who has macular degeneration doesn't have to lose their eyesight. It's advanced materials like uh, fiber optics that are, it's, you can create fiber optics in such a pristine way that you don't have to have repeaters, which drives down the cost for fiber optics and it closes the business case for manufacturing in space. Um, we're compounding pharmaceuticals in a way that you cannot do in the gravity well of Earth. We're, we're creating immunizations that you cannot create in the gravity well of Earth. So these are all different markets that, that we are proving out on the International Space Station knowing that eventually there's going to be a large capital influx, not just for launch, which is what we're doing today, but also for human habitation in space. Um, and that's really the end state that we're seeking to achieve. Whenever we talk about commerce, we talk about competition, because that drives commerce to a large degree. Talk about two kinds of competition. One is Boeing against SpaceX, because you've got two horses in the race, but one seems to be lagging behind. Do you need Boeing to catch up? And what about Soyuz? Are you still going to be doing business with Soyuz? So uh, the Boeing and SpaceX uh, uh, paradigm, I'll talk about that first. Um, so remember, SpaceX was doing commercial resupply of the International Space Station, and they were largely doing it with a lot of the same equipment that they're now, now going to be doing commercial crew with. Boeing did not participate in commercial resupply. So Boeing went straight from nothing to commercial crew. So that's a, that's a lot harder of a starting position. And so, yes, they, they, are, they are a little bit behind right now. Um, and of course, it, it costs us a little more to get them ramped up because of their, 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 their starting position. That being said, we are committed to having two partners in this, in this future that we, that we envision. But we also believe this is important. There are other companies right now that are stepping up the, to the plate that want to be part of this. Sierra Nevada Corporation, Blue Origin, which is Jeff Bezos' organization. So there's other partners out there on the horizon uh, for this for this commercial marketplace eventuality. Uh, and what about Soyuz? Are you still going to work with Soyuz? You've spent, uh, what, yeah, $3.5 billion with them over the last 10 years. 
That's right. So when we think about the International Space Station, half of it is the United States segment with all of our international partners, and the other half of it is the Russian segment. Um, so if we want to make sure that we keep it crude with both Americans and Russians, then it will be appropriate for us for Americans to launch on Soyuz rockets and for Russians to launch on commercial crew rockets. Now, that being said, the difference is instead of us going out and buying seats at $90 million a piece, um, now we're going to be able to do a no exchange of funds trade, which is a very different, it makes it more of a partnership and less of a dependency. So we like the partnership. We want to we want to get ourselves off of the dependency. Talk about the two astronauts who are scheduled to go up. I mean, you must have some affinity with them. I mean, you are yourself a very accomplished carrier and combat pilot. You must understand some of what they're going through. Well, I would never suggest that I know what they're going through, but I can tell you for sure that these are the best that America has to offer. Uh, Doug Hurley is a, a Marine Corps test pilot um, and, and an amazing individual. Uh, Bob Benkin is a flight test engineer from the United States Air Force. Um, and of course, they're both veterans of numerous space shuttle missions. They're both test pilots. Remember what this mission is. This is a test mission. And of course, we we, we always have, we almost always have test pilots on test missions. Um, and, and these are the two right people for, for this job. Um, and we are very anxious to get them to orbit, get them onto the space station and get them home safely. This is a historic moment, no matter what, for the reasons we've talked about. But beyond that, it's not lost on anyone that this is in the middle of a pandemic. How important That's is right. the United States right now to be returning astronauts to space from United States soil when we are fighting this COVID-19? That's so important. Look, NASA has a long history of doing stunning things in the middle of very difficult times. We go back to the Apollo era. Uh, we saw, um, you know, a, a war raging in Vietnam and protests in the streets and at the Capitol and, and at universities. We had civil rights abuses and civil rights protests, protests and of course, um, we were in the height of the Cold War. And in the midst of all of that, we were able to send Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the surface of the moon. And for that unique moment in time, everybody in the country united. And we all looked up and we dreamed bigger dreams. And because of that moment, there are so many people at NASA that are doing even, even more amazing work today. We need to create those stunning achievements to inspire the next generation. Yes, we're in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, NASA has been very aggressive in having people work from home. We did that intentionally because we wanted to protect this mission. There is nothing more important for us right now than launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil, something that we have not done since 2011, the retirement of the space shuttles. So we protected this mission. We're now at the point where we're getting ready to launch um, and we can do it. We can do it and we've done it safely. We've, been, we've given everybody personal protective equipment. We've made sure that we've got social distancing, that we're, that we're dividing up shifts so that we're minimizing contact when working on the vehicle. Um, all of these things put us in a position to have a successful mission. Um, and yes, this is our legacy and we can do it today just as we did it in the 1960s. And finally, Mr. Administrator, you mentioned Neil Armstrong. Uh, success today, what does that mean for your goal of having a woman on the moon by 2024? Oh, it's big. So what we're doing is we're driving down costs and we're increasing access to space. And we, as much as we love Apollo, the problem with Apollo is that it ended. Well, it just so happens that in Greek mythology, Apollo had a twin sister. Her name was Artemis, and we are going to the moon, this time sustainably, under the Artemis program, named after the twin sister of Apollo. This time when we go, we have a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps that includes women. We're going to go sustainably. We're going to go with commercial partners, international partners. We're going to use the resources of the moon, namely hundreds of millions of tons of water ice, to learn how to live and work for long periods of time. We're going to take that knowledge all the way to Mars. So, um, so what we've proven today is the business model. How do we make it work um, from a business model perspective? And we're applying that to the moon right now. We just went under contract uh, with three commercial companies to deliver American astronauts to the surface of the moon commercially.